especially like uh, whenever there is something that is happening, complaining becomes on the rise. At the beginning of COVID, oh, COVID, why COVID? We complain about COVID. When are we going to get the vaccine? Once we get the vaccine, oh, we have so many types of, oh, this vaccine is a, is a scam, this vaccine is a, is a political move, this vaccine is the antichrist. Uh, one person was telling me, you know, uh, they, they, they have a picture uh, going around, like you're getting the injection from one side, and the Holy Spirit is leaving you from the other side. So it's all kind of fun, <laughs> right? So it's, uh, we, 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 we find creative ways to really complain. We find creative ways to really uh, uh, complain. But is it, is it healthy to complain? Is it healthy to complain? You like complaining? Okay. <laughs> but is it healthy? So is it like getting an energy out, outside of you? Yes. I don't know if complaining is healthy is the same, but I think venting is kind of healthy. Okay, how does, how does venting help? To get out of what's in, like to kind of just be able to talk about it and get out. But complaining is a little more pessimistic, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And, and venting, how many times do I need to vent so I feel relaxed? <laughs> well, this is the trick. We, I think, it's, it's, uh, I think, venting sometimes becomes very tricky because I think, yes, I got it out, but after one week, I need to get it out again. I need to get it out again, which is different than really talking with someone and, and feeling that this person hears me out, empathizes with me, and maybe find a solution. So the objective is not just. Venting is not just complaining. Yes, complaining might be more critical. Yes, you're right, you're funny. Uh, but but uh, the, the objective, like, hopefully that I find a way to really talk about it in an objective way as much as possible, or in a way that would be helping me to really find solution, get out with a different, a different perspective. So complaining is the expression of uh, dissatisfaction uh, or annoyances about something, like I like this picture of this uh, 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 child, uh, annoying, complaining, I don't like this, I don't like this, I'm not, I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied, it's something that is really not uh, going well with me. So, and, and it's also, it could be like being critical of things and people and critical of everything, even the pictures on the wall. Like, I could be very critical that I don't like how this picture is set. I don't like the design of this room. I don't like this. I don't like that. So, it, 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 it has many forms. Any other forms that come to your mind about complaining? We're experts with this, right? Any other forms that come to your mind? Nagging. Nagging. So, I don't like what I'm having. I want something else. So, I nag for something different, something else. Yes, possibly yes. Whining, yes. I think you, you, you're getting the, 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 the mother children analogies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Impact of complaining. Why, why are we talking about complaining? Why is complaining something that we need to talk about and maybe find ways around it? Or what is the impact of complaining on us? as human beings. It has three main aspects that I thought of. Uh, social, it impacts our social circles. Would you like to be around someone who complains a lot? No. Yeah. So if I complain a lot, this is a signal. If I complain a lot and I find people really not sticking around, or maybe this is an alarm for me. No, no one is going to stick around we don't like to hear complaint. It's okay to hear complaint, but if it's all the time it's excessive, it becomes bothering to even to others. So it impacts my social, my social circle as well. It impacts uh, my mental health. It impacts my physical health. And there is a special slide for spiritual health as well. That's going to go to me to make sure that I did not miss anything. So, so, so uh, socially, it, it impacts.
impacts uh, my, my, my circle mental health, it impacts the brain. When I complain a lot, it, it, it impacts the hippocampus in my brain, which is, it stops, it threatens, it, 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 it deteriorates, it, it, it's an obstacle for my ability to become creative. If I complain, complain, well, what's the solution? If I keep on complaining, very nice, okay, good, valid, well, and then what? What is the solution? The solution is not usually the opposite. The solution is not the opposite. It's not that I don't like this, let's move it. No, that's not, that I'm going to remove a lot of things in my, from my life. That's not going to be helpful. But how to find creative ways, either to change it a little bit, or to accept it a little bit, or to get you to, to do something. But the impact or the solution is not to get rid of the source of annoyance. Because if I get, get rid of this, I'm going to find another thing. I'm going to find a third. I'm going to find a fourth. So I have to find creative ways. So continuous complaining, it impacts my brain ability to find creative ways. Especially the, the, the problem solving abilities. It declines my memory uh, and I become less adaptive. It, it, it limits my ability to adapt to situations. And this, of course, impacts my mental well being, my mental health and well being. It impacts me physically because it increases crystal, which is a hormone which increases blood pressure, which increases cholesterol, which increases diabetes, which results in that. So it could impact this on the long run. It does not happen from one time, but on the long run, it increases my blood pressure, it impacts my cholesterol, it impacts my life, 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 life diabetes. So it's, it's something that really is serious threat to me as a being socially, my well-being, mental health, and my physical abilities. Why do I complain? Why do people complain? Basically, we have certain or set of belief systems. If we have them, we will tend to be more complainers. If I believe those, or one of them are a combination, I will, I will complain a lot. I will always point, typo, sorry, point imperfect things. I have to always find the imperfection, point it out, and do something. If I continuously believe that my role is to find imperfection, well, this means that I'm going to be critical of everything around me. You know what? I don't like this because I deserve better. I deserve better. I deserve better health, I deserve better car, I deserve better job, I deserve better this and that, I deserve better everything. So just by thinking that I deserve all the good things, it's nice, but that's not going to make, that's going to take away from my satisfaction. It's not going to make me be satisfied with things that are around me. And God created all this beauty in Accepting simple stuff in our life. Like a simple meal. Like a simple dessert. Doesn't have to be fancy dessert, but a simple. The book of Proverbs says, like, a simple meal with love is better than a feast with hatred. A simple meal with love is better than a fancy feast. A lot of food items, but there are hatreds, right? So having this attitude, I deserve better than this. I know better, another belief system, and I think we're all guilty of this, right? I know better than you, <laughs> I know better than not just you, than everybody here, right? It becomes a mindset, and if I have this mindset, I become critical and complainer. Or, you know what, this is not good enough. It's, it's stemming from, I deserve better, but I projected that this is not good enough. This is not good enough. Life has been not fair, and there is nothing I can do about it, which is having a mindset of giving up. 
You know what? My life is not fair. This is not fair. This is not fair. This is not fair. So I tend to give up. I tend to complain about things around me, and I end up really giving up. So who's who loses the most? I lose the most. Tomorrow will be like today, and yesterday imperfect. Again, it's a set of hopelessness. So those kind of belief system, it's a mindset. How do I believe? Some of them could be due to maybe surrounding, maybe circumstances that are unfortunate, maybe family upbringing, maybe unfortunate things that happen to me. But you know what? This is what the Bible is calling us to do. Be what? Transformed by the renewal of your mind. This is a belief system. When I change my mind, I am changing my belief system. You know what? Yes, there will always be imperfect things. It's okay. I'm just going to live with them. You know what? Yes, I deserve good things, but um, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to get everything that is perfect. It's okay. It's okay. I need to humble myself. It's okay. I deserve better, but it's, you know what? It's okay. Me, why do I why do I deserve better? Because sometimes when I take what is good, what is better, especially if, I, if there is a selection, so I leave the less better to someone else. So think about it. So if I leave the less better to someone else, and I take the first option that is the better option, so. Why, why, why is this person's fault to take the second bet? Or maybe they could say, why don't I take the first option? Why don't I take the most beautiful, the most better option? So we need to be transformed. So this is a problem to be, to be transformed. And transform the belief system, transform the way I think about things, about life, about myself, about people around me. Complaining and the Bible. Actually, this is one of my early Bible a, a, a story class to in Sunday school. But for some reason, it's imprinted in my in my mind. No, sorry, not this on the coming story. So these are verses where the Bible says, "Do not grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged." The judge is is standing at the door. This is St. James who is giving a lot of practical advices. And one of those advices is do not complain about one another. So when I judge you or when I complain against you, I'm kind, it's a kind of judgment. But the right judge is God, not, not me. The right judge is standing at the door. I should not be the judge. I should leave the judgment to God, not for me. St. Paul also says in the Psalms, I pour out before him my complaint. So this is, I like this verse because it has a redirection. Before him I tell my trouble. What does this mean? If I really, if I am really troubled, the best person to complain to is the Lord. If I am really troubled, the best person to complain and pour out my annoyance, pour out myself, pour out what is really bothering me, is the Lord. I pour out before Him my complaint. Before Him I tell my trouble. Because I am talking to the judge. I am talking to the one who can really soothe me. Who can hear my complaint, who can really transform my thinking, who can really do something. Not something by changing things around me, which is a common misconception that we always pray. I pray for my boss. Maybe an accident would be a good option. <laughs> right? <laughs> No, that's not a prayer. <laughs> this is revenge. This is something, anything else other than, other than prayer. But I pray for my own self to be able to get along with my boss. 
maybe there is tension. Yes, I pray for I pray for him, for her, and for myself. One of my favorite prayers is God give me grace in their eyes and give them grace in my eyes. What does this mean? Allow me Lord to see them through you and allow them to see me through you. So I'm putting a filter here. I'm putting God as a mediator in between me and the other person and the other thing. So when, when, when this filter, filter is present, I think this is safety. This is safety for me. It makes me feel safe and it makes the other people around me feel safe as well. Now here's the example I was talking about that my, 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 one of my early lessons and has been kind of imprinted in my mind, which is in Numbers 21. Uh, so it's a story that has two parts. So this is the first part of the story. When the Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in Nagat, heard that Israel was coming along the road to Atherion, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this, Atherion, he attacked the Israelites and captured some of them. Then Israel made his vow to the Lord. So people of Israel, another king, they oppressed them, they captured them. Then Israel made this vow to the Lord. If you will deliver these people into our hands, we will totally, we will totally destroy, is be destroyed. We will totally destroy their cities because, you know, God told them certain cities, you have to completely destroy. Of course, sometimes this is a troubling thing for us, but you look at the meaning. The meaning is that those cities were not God worshippers, they were worshipping other gods, and keeping them would mean that the worship of idols would infiltrate. So this is basically symbolizing sin. So this is telling us, deal with sin in a radical way. Side, side note, the Lord listened to Israel's plea and gave the Canaanites over to them. So the Lord listened to them and he helped them. They were so happy. What would you do if you pray? So this is an example of praying for a boss to have an accident, but don't do this please. <laughs> right? It's a different context. It's not the same. It's totally different, totally different context. So here they prayed for something and the Lord supported them. The Lord gave them victory. How would you feel when the Lord gives you victory? Ecstatic, when you see it's coming from God. I'm so happy. I'm so ecstatic about what you did with me, Lord. And then, let's hear the rest of the story. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God. God just gave them victory. They spoke against God and against Moses. Walking away so that I don't put this down. <laughs> spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up into Egypt to die in the wilderness. What 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 did they start to do? Hmm? Complain. Complain. They just got victory. God gave them great victory. And then they grew impatient for some reason. They had to go around to travel maybe a long way. They grew impatient. They spoke against God. God who gave them victory, what did they do? They spoke against Him. They complained against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They met the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned 
when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed to the Lord, to the people, for the people. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake, it's a bronze snake, and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. What is the meaning of this story? I, I, I really like this story, so many meanings. It's very meaningful. What's the problem? They complain. What, why do you think there was venomous snakes who bit them? What does this mean? Think, think allegorically. Think meaning-wise. Why snakes with venom and they die? Why? Think about it and tell me why. I might get you a shock. Think about it from complaining and the effect and the side effect of complaining. <coughs> yes. I'm not sure, but I think because maybe they're in like their trust in the Lord was conditional on things being good. And when things didn't work out, then they started complaining. And so it's kind of like yes. it's not really trust in that sense. Absolutely. Why venomous snakes? I want you to think of the venomous the snake. They bit them, venom goes into their blood, into their body. What did we just say about complaining? What does it do to the body? Poison. It's like poison. Mm. Complaining is internal poisoning. Complaining people, there is, there is internal poison. It's like poison going through my veins. Like crystal, when it goes, when it increases, High blood pressure, venom, diabetes, cholesterol. So as, as, as if God is telling them something, so it's, it's a lesson to be learned to them. Be careful. When you complain, the first person you're impacting is yourself. It's like putting poison inside of you, inside of your body, inside of your brain, inside of all of you. But thank God that they recognize and learn the lesson. What did they what did they do? Immediately. This is this is the beauty of, of the story. We sent when we spoke against the Lord and Moses. Yes, I want to admit my fault. Yes. And this is a very nice humility, sense of humility. If you look at the life of David of, of David, yes. Uh, the king and the prophet, prophet, not a prophet, as a rogue prophet, as he said so many prophecies in his songs about the Messiah. But David, he made actually so many mistakes. David, whom God said he is a man according after my own heart, he made so many mistakes. If you read the book of Samuel, first Samuel, and you read the life of David, so many mistakes. Of course, we remember the biggest ones, but he made, he made so many mistakes, by the way. But there is one major characteristic that made David special. Whenever he was confronted with his sin, he would immediately do this thing, I have sinned against the Lord. He would bow down and he would say, I have sinned. I have sinned against the Lord. That the Lord will be done. Whatever the Lord says, let it be. I am your son. I am your slave. I am yours. So the people did this. We have sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against Moses. I also want to think of the remedy. What was the remedy? Bronze snake on a pole. Yes, don't tell me it's a cross. I know, we know that it's a cross. <laughs> what else? What else special about this bronze snake on the pole? No pharmacist here? What is the, what is the common sign for pharmacy? The snake? Best snake, just a snake? In a cup? Meaning? 
Remedy is made from the venom as well. Remedy is made from the venom, right? It's like COVID, when they take the attuned, like, like when they attuned virus and we are injected with the weak virus. So the same treatment is from the same venom, the same ailment, but with a just measure, with an appropriate measure. And this is what God said. He said, I'm going to take the poison out of you, but there is one condition. Or not just one condition, there is one way. There is one way to take the venom out of our bodies. And what is, what is the remedy? Look at the cross. Look at Jesus. Because this is the essence of complaining. When we complain, where are our eyes? Or where are the eyes of our mind? They are on us or on people, but they are not on God. And this is the problem. This is the problem of complaining. When we complain, it means our eyes have been shifted down from God, from heaven, to us, to self, and to the world around us. So the remedy is, look at the cross. Look to Jesus. Be Christ-centered, which is I have my eyes, my mind focused, not on what people do, not on what I need to do, not on what I deserve, but on Christ. Did Christ deserve to die on the cross? Did he deserve to die on the cross? No. Did he deserve to be beaten? Did he deserve to live a poor life? Did he deserve to have one of his disciples betray him? Did he deserve all of this? No. But he experienced all of this. He experienced it. So give us a mother. If I am the teacher and I live this life, you're going to experience the same thing. So it's okay. So it's okay to have unfortunate things happen to me. This is okay. But I'm going to put my eyes on Christ. This is how I find the remedy. This is how I take the venom, the poison, out of my, of my body. Are we up for some discussion question? Not can we do a discussion somehow? Just two questions that I have, maybe take five minutes in every kind of two or three benches next to one another or behind one another. Take a few moments to think about this, these questions. What are the signs that we are in a complaining mood? How can I catch myself in a complaining mood? And the second question, how have you been avoiding compl complaining, not comparing, sorry, complaining? I'm going to give you some suggestion at the end, but I would like you to discuss this for maybe five minutes.